Hello everyone, welcome back to part number two on constraints in this optimization for machine learning lecture series. Um, we stopped in the last video with this well, definition, let's say, of a problem with an equality constraint. Right? We used, and I'm going to use this because it's very um, intuitive, the linear model once more, but we saw also that this can be a general nonlinear loss function, right? For uh, the purpose of this video, it doesn't really matter. This one is just very intuitive because, you know, it's all circles in, in the loss function landscape. I, I will comment on that in a second. So we have the minimization problem of a loss function subject to some constraint function. Right? This is little k, uh, little s lower case c that has to be less or equal than zero. And we, again, in this linear setting, introduce this as a budget on our weight. So I have written it here as an inner product, so w times w, which means the sum of the squares of the individual entries has to be lower than some capital C. And we ended with um, the statement that we can have a problem of this type, maybe in addition also equality constraints, and that we would like to solve problems of this type. And before we do this in a very general form and state what's known as the karouche kuntaka or KKT conditions in the next video, I would like to give you a short introduction and uh, well, give you an intuition how these constraints really work. And to do so, let's you know look at a sketch. But one thing that we should mention is before we continue, the central issue, our optimality condition, the gradient of the loss function in our optimum has to be zero, is no longer valid. Okay, so we have to come up with something else to show optimality and to find points that satisfy optimality conditions in the presence of constraints. So what I've uh, drawn here is, let's say we have this constraint problem, and this is the reason why I started with this linear problem with a quadratic function. Um, the loss function in this very simple case is made of circles or ellipses. And so let's say this w rec is for the regression problem, the optimal value. Okay, so we solve a regression problem. This is a level set of our loss function, and here is where the loss function becomes minimum, the center of this circle in this case, or an ellipse, if not all w or not all directions are equally uh, distributed, but like this. And now we have this constraint that we do not want to have arbitrarily large weights. Okay, so let's assume this is the optimal value, and let's assume further that maybe somewhere here is our solution w equal to zero. And now we say, okay, what this means is really, you know, the squared of the radius here is that the radius shouldn't be too large, okay? So if I put uh, the c to a very large value, let's say the radius were something like this, right? And going all the way around here, then we see, well, the constraint doesn't really matter, right? Um, the optimum satisfies this constraint in the in the same point where the unconstrained solution lies. So this is something we have to erase here because well, the point where the constraint is not really active, and we're going to discuss this in a bit more detail, is not really of importance. Only the point where this constraint becomes active means it's met with equality is really where we have a difference to the unconstrained problem. So now let's assume that we have something like this as our radius. Okay, so this is where our w transpose w is equal to c, meaning that the interior of this circle is allowed by our constraint function, the exterior is forbidden. Um, and now let's further assume that we have a current iterate that maybe exactly lies on this point, okay? And so the question is now, where do we want to go? Usually what we've done in gradient descent, we have looked at well, the gradient, the derivative of the loss function, and we've gone into this direction. And so if you look now at this quadratic function, then, then this gradient directly points towards the center in the circle case. Right? So this would be the negative gradient of our loss function at this current iterate w. Okay. But more importantly, um, we are not only allowed to go into this direction precisely, but this direction spans now a half space in which we are allowed to go and another half space in which we are not allowed to go. 
Okay, we've discussed this briefly also when we talked about descent methods. So this is supposed to be orthogonal to this one. Um, you're allowed to go into this half plane, right? So everywhere where you have a decrease, you are forbidden to go in the other direction, right? So this is also in this point locally, you are allowed to go inside the green circle here. You're not allowed to move outside. And so now we have a problem because this dire direction is obviously not allowed for all times, right? We, this is what we have to reduce our loss function, but we are not allowed to leave the circle due to the constraint. And so now if we look at the constraint function, then we have a very similar situation as with this dashed line, we are only allowed to move inward the cycle, right? And so this normal direction for the normal vector along this circle, again, is defined by the gradient, but now not of the loss function, but of my constraint, okay? So the normal is the derivative of now the lower case c, so this function with respect to the weight. And so what you see is, and the normal points outward, as it would here, and then the minus sign gives you the inward uh, direction. So if I look at this point, and now try to draw the tangent, then we see that this is the normal direction that is defined by this definition here, okay? And so now we see that we have a cone that we are allowed to go into, right? So this part here, is excluded due to the constraint violation. And this part is excluded due to, well, this would mean a, an increase in the loss function, which clearly violates our idea of, of descent, okay? So what we're left with is this cone. And so what we find in the point where we can no longer decrease without uh, violating the constraints, is that this will be precisely in this, again, linear case here, the point here where these directions point opposite to one another. So this would be the gradient direction and this would be the direction, the, the gradient of our constraint, okay? So we have a, a collinearity of these two directions and apparently this is the point that is optimal in this case. Why? Because you see, from this point, this lies on the smallest circle around the non-constraint optimum. So we don't get any closer to the minimum than this, right? And this is a simplified setting because it's all, all circles and linear models and so on, but conceptually, and we will see this in the next video, this idea holds also for general non-linear models, okay? And so what we have now is, we have that in this situation, we have this collinearity and this is something that can be exploited, okay? So what we will find is that a constant multiplied with this direction gives us this direction, okay? So what you can say is, and I'm going to pick a very peculiar constant here, the gradient of the loss function in, let's call this WC now, the constraint solution, this is proportionate to minus the gradient of the loss function. And if I take the derivative of this one with respect to w, I get um, two times w, right? So what I'm going to get is the wc, and what I'm going to add is, well, or two times wc, and I'm going to add two parameters, and you will see in a minute why I'm doing this. And so you see, well, this is now our condition for optimality in the constraint case, right? Collinearity of these two means I have a function like this, and I can now rephrase this um, and put it into on, on one side. So what I'm going to do is, so let's use to the right here maybe, so minus the gradient of WC plus two times lambda by n, wc is zero, okay? And now this is a really important equation because this is now our optimality condition, if you wish, for the constraint problem. And what we can ask ourselves now is this, well, it looks like a gradient, right? And so maybe this one is also the gradient of something, right? 
So what I can ask, is this the gradient of something and of what? Okay. And now, well, you see this is a linear function, so taking the, the integral, uh, we see that this will give us a square term. So interestingly, this will be the gradient for the following loss function. And I'm directly writing this as a minimization problem. W in the RQ. And now this is my loss function, L. L of W plus, and now I have lambda over N. W transposed W, right? So if I'm taking the derivative of this loss function, I get precisely this one. So what we see is we have a new loss function for which this is our optimality condition, if you wish, okay? And so if I can rewrite this once more and then I arrive back at what I had in the beginning, minimize W and now I'm, I'm reusing this one, one over N. Z W minus Y transpose times Z W minus Y. And now you see why I've picked the constant in the way I did, plus lambda times W transpose W. Okay? And so you see, now this is what happens. We have transformed our constraint into an additional term, a regularization term, in our loss function. And we've seen this before, right? This is precisely what we do in rigid regression. We add a regularization term that somehow penalizes weights that move too far away from zero, okay? And so the constraint, so let's draw the line here, this one is very closely interconnected with this point, right? And one thing more that we can add is if the constraint so it gets gets softer. Let's say okay, we increase the C, the radius of this orange circle increases. This means that the per penalization parameter on this term goes down. Okay, we put less emphasis on restraining the weight size. And so you see, there's an intricate connection between additional terms in the loss function and this constraint. Right? It's not immediately clear how to relate the lambda and the C. And we will see in the next video how the karouche kuntaka conditions draw exactly this connection. But I hope that this gives us a better and intuitive vision of what constraints really mean and how they transform into loss functions. And now we have basically reinvented the rich regression which we have seen already before. And so with this, we, we stop here. And in the next video, we will move on to the more general, the nonlinear setting. And we will see that the karouche kuntaka conditions basically generalize this intricate relation to arbitrary nonlinear functions. Thank you.